President Bola Tinubu's tax regime is set to take off as he inaugurates a committee on fiscal policy and tax reform to be headed by Taiwo Oyedele. Multiple taxation have over the years stifled business growth with the organized private sector asking for reviews of unfriendly fiscal policies of the past administration. Nigeria ranks low on the global ease of paying taxes, while the country's tax-to-GDP ratio is one of the lowest in the world and below the African average. That's our first hot topic this morning on The Breakfast. According to Water Aid, more than 60 million people in Nigeria do not have access to basic clean water supply. And the UNICEF says two thirds of the country's population lack access to portable water. We're talking 133 million persons in this country. We'll be addressing water poverty in Nigeria today as a second hot topic on the breakfast. And of the press, We'll take a look at the headlines that made it to the front pages of some major headlines in the country. Our analysts will be joining us to pieces everything, as we say, on the breakfast this morning. And of the press. Hello, good morning and welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a Tuesday edition, we call it the Technophile edition. I am Maureen Menongwe Zigwe, how are you? Hope you woke up well and uh, starting on a bright note. Let's go straight to our very first stop trending. Lagos Task Force dislodges traders on rail tracks. The Lagos State Task Force on Sunday said it cleared trail tracks on the Agege area of the metropolis as part of its ongoing exercise to restore sanity along the railway corridors of the state. The news agency of Nigeria reported that the task force's director of press and public affairs, Badeon Abdurrahim, disclosed this in a statement made available to journalists. According to him, the agency's chairman, CSP Shola Jajaloye, led the exercise. Judge lawyer, according to the statement, said the operation was necessary to save lives and property and ensure safety and security along rail tracks in the state. He said the exercise was carried out to dislodge all forms of business activities on rail tracks and prevent obstruction that could hinder the smooth movement of trains. The task force boss said the ongoing enforcement across the state will be sustained for a month to dissuade traders from returning to ensure all rail line corridors are completely recovered. And our second hot topic, top trending, Ocean Cup member dies, Cup member dies in a retention cap, a Cup member identified simply as Bright has died at the AD orientation camp of the National Youth Service Corps in Ocean State. Bright's colleague, Lawrence Echezona, in a narration, uh, well, in trying to narrate the event that led to his death, made the revelation on Facebook that the core member died in his sleep over the weekend. The state public relations officer, NYSC, Fumi Okundayo, confirmed the incident but refrained from giving further details about the circumstances surrounding his death. All right, that's a very sad one there. I hope that the necessary investigation to be made to unravel what happened to him while he slept because being a core member makes him the responsibility of the government. All right, from that second top trending, we'll go to the third. Lagos government suppressed NSAR's evidence, and that's according to Faratimi. Dele Faratimi has accused the Lagos state government of suppressing the evidence of killings that occurred during the NSAS protest in October of 2020. Faratimi said this while reacting to a leaked memo that the Lagos government has approved the mass burial of 103 corpses recovered in the aftermath of the NSAS protest. Faratimi, during an interview on a television station, 
also hit out at the Lagos state government on their move to conduct a mass burial for the 103 victims of the 2020 Ansars massacre. He also slammed the Lagos government for lying to the people of the state for almost three years and for bringing back very sad memories that they are trying to forget. Faratimi added that for situations like this not to occur in the future in Nigeria, citizens and leaders must learn how to embrace the truth and to speak out the truth. But there you have it. It's something that Nigerians were shocked uh, about this past weekend when they learned about this leaked memo. 103 persons to be buried as a result of the killings of the ANSAS protest. We had so many things about that protest. We had so many things about what happened. Uh, those who gave, you know, their accounts said people were killed. The government said people were not killed. And then to hear that 103 people will be buried as a result of that was something that Nigerians were just taken aback on. And of course, uh, the government has said that these people, these 103 people, were not killed at the toll gate, but as a result of the aftermath of the protests that took place on the 21st and the 22nd, and not what happened on the 20th at the toll gate, and that their bodies were picked from different parts of Lagos and not the toll gate. Well, you do the math. Um, obviously, this is going to uh, lead to more or requests for more investigations over this as the truth continue to unfold. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And it's time for us to take a short break and come back with Off the Press. Stay with us. <laughs> 